Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the 2% Better Health Podcast. I'm your host, Carrie Bennett, and today I am so excited to chat with Lance Shuttler. Uh, Lance is someone who I kind of like from afar, I admired his work on Instagram so much because he was speaking my language, right? Like he was talking about light and he was talking about circadian rhythm and like the pineal gland and, you know, in all of these ways that really connected to quantum biology. And it was just like, wow, I feel like this guy like really, really gets it in so many different realms. And so your work was so inspiring, Lance. And, you know, then like, I, I, I'm glad I decided to reach out. Cause you know, sometimes I never know. It's like, should I reach out, you know, and see if he wants to chat. But then I found out that you also have a company called EMF, EMF harmonized, correct? Yes. Yes. And, yeah. and that you actually understand this concept of like the electromagnetic fields in our environment. And there are some that we might need to mitigate and there's some that, you know, are beneficial for us. And so this conversation can go so many places and I'm so excited to have you on today. So thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. That was quite an introduction. I really appreciate it. And uh, the, the feelings are mutual. I'm very happy that we've connected because, you know, we, we both have important messages to share and, uh, you know, we can get it out there in a bigger way and help people. And, and, and we learn from others who, you know, share things with us and, and all of it. So it's, it's amazing, powerful synergy. Yeah, I, I totally sense that too. And it's so cool. So, I mean, what got you started down this way? We all kind of have a unique way where we got to where we are. So where were you and how'd you get here? <laughs> uh, so, so, so many stories that I could begin with, but really it kind of began, uh, a little over um, 11 years ago now. And specifically, I really, so I was always really into health and wellness, like in college, but in high school and younger, I played all sports. So I was very active and social and like wanted to, you know, engage with things and do things and just be, just be living, you know? And uh, when I got to college, I really started taking exercise more serious than I did in high school, even though it's, you know, athletic and played sports actually exercising and strengthening the nervous system wasn't something that I was really too familiar with. And so, you know, going into 2011, I started learning about the concept of neurogenesis and really kind of what sparked that was the movie Limitless. You know, I'm sure many people have seen it. You know, the concept of you could take something and it opens up your, your brain and basically your brain becomes activated and you're, you know, focused, happy, you're clear, you're, you know, very sharp, all of that stuff. And so, you know, I knew the movie was, uh, you know, allegedly based on fiction, but I do believe that there are obviously certain things that you can take that really help expand and promote neurogenesis, the creation of new neurons, uh, strengthening the nervous system. And so that concept became fascinating to me. And so I started learning about, you know, lion's mane mushroom, rhodiola, uh, biophotons with the rhodiola, um, you know, all that sort of amazing stuff and just, just kept learning and researching and reading and asking questions. That, that's the biggest, you know, thing that really helped me has been asking questions because then you can get further and further towards, you know, what the ultimate, uh, truth is of, of things. So that's, that's the short story, but, you know, I, I eventually then started working as a health coach. I had my own business uh, for a little while doing health coaching. And then I uh, also worked for a different company doing health coaching and worked with supplements and food and diet, nutrition, all of that stuff. And, you know, it just sort of all led into where things are at now with starting these, these few companies and other things that are coming too. Wow. Really, really cool. <clears throat> and I, I guess, I bet you we could do a whole podcast on bio photons and rhodiola and, and adaptogens. Um, but so you're with, with talking about neurogenesis and I mean, what got you to understand the light aspect of it? What, what really got you into more of like the quantum side of things? Because we, we all kind of, I feel like start out with maybe like, like you said, like extra, it's like a common progression, maybe like exercise and then supplements and good quality nutrition, but like not a lot of people actually get to this level to say, wait a second, there's something deeper. It's like, we think now nutrition is foundational. We think, you know, exercise is foundational, but there's something deeper. So like, what got you to that, that depth right there of the quantum level? So, uh, I, I, one day was with a bunch of friends and a friend had sent me this documentary called zeitgeist moving forward. And this, 
uh, documentary was like two and a half hours long. And I just went into the bedroom just to start watching it. And I sat there the whole time and finished it straight through. And that really, they talked about a lot of different things, but in relation to your question, they talk, he, he pointed out the, how we as humans of the past would always look at the rising sun and we would create, you know, stories and mythologies and, you know, the, the actual physical sciences and the quantum sciences, how light actually is life and benefits us. So started learning about that, those sort of concepts and then quickly came across information on sun gazing. And that has been, you know, my, uh, a, a medicine for me that has helped me in so many different ways and just always been, uh, you know, there to really optimize and, and support. So sun gazing is something that, you know, I started doing a little bit w when I could, you know what I mean? And then, you know, I'm fortunate now to live in a place where it's very sunny often. And so I can literally just sunbathe and just, you know, get all of that light. So the concept of sun gazing and how it affects the pineal gland and, you know, the HPA access and all of these sort of different things going on, uh, it fascinated me. And so I started learning about, uh, you know, color therapy, light therapy, uh, all sorts of different, you know, incredible things that we could talk about. But, um, you know, that's what got me. And that's always been sort of my guiding light, like literally and, and figuratively is uh, the light of the sun, you know, and there's many mythologies and stories that relate to these words, the light of the sun, you know, it's, okay. uh, it's, it's all connected. It, absolutely. <clears throat> I couldn't put it better than that. Absolutely. So let's, let's get into a little nitty gritty about the sun. All right, let's, let's start there. What is it about the sun? So for someone who says, okay, I know the sun provides light and I know plants need it to grow, but how can I benefit from it? Is there a specific time of day that's more beneficial than others? Like what is the light, the sunlight itself providing me? Why should I interact with it more? Absolutely. So uh, ultimately, as you very uh, incredibly well explained, Carrie, is how it relates to easy water or structured water, uh, you know, how that light actually benefits us. But, uh, you know, starting out sun gazing and, and how that light's affecting us is first, if a person does do it, you want to do it, you know, first 45 minutes of sunrise or last 45 minutes of sunset. That's where it's actually going to be most safe for your eyes. And you do want to build up to it. But what's happening then is, you know, the, the sun, it has information. So light itself is information. And this is like, I mean, you talk to scientists who work with lasers and, uh, you know, computer devices with using crystals to store and transmit information. They know that light is information. And this is really what's, what's going on is that information from the sun, obviously the very beneficial life supporting information is communicating with our eyes, which, you know, some call the seat of the soul, uh, you know, as relates to the pineal gland, but our photoreceptors are picking up on that light and then uh, creating from a quantum level first, creating a cascade of effects that then reach down to the physical. So then we have, you know, biochemical reactions that are, you know, more measurable in, in today's standard, let's say. Um, so it's literally, I, I like to describe the human body and I feel like this is really empowering for, for me and for other people is that, and all of us is that we as humans, we are the free energy generation. We are the free energy generators. You know, a lot of people know about free energy technologies. We are a free energy technology. It begins with us and we need to learn how to use our bodies and use different things to generate free energy. And this is something that, you know, it's a whole nother topic, but, you know, we, we, we are learning this information that we have forgotten on this planet and that's part of it but uh going to that with the free energy is literally the light from the sun is just information and then it will interact with us and then literally create physical life and so like photosynthesis with the sun like photosynthesis as a uh, as a process as you know carrie is a free energy unit in the physical world like this is what's happening it's it's the like 
intermediary between the non-physical of information and the physical of, you know, the blade of grass. Hey, absolutely. It's this, it's this idea that every living creature is trying to capture light, slow it down to create mass, right? That's the reverse of the Einstein equals MC squared. And if we can recognize that that's the power that we have too, I mean, we acknowledge it in plants, we acknowledge it in certain species of uh, algae, you know, I mean, bacteria, but we don't necessarily recognize it for ourselves. So that's wonderful to point out that it's there and it's there for the taking and it's there on a regular basis on a 24 hour clock and we need to just tap into it. And, and I like how you describe it as information because <clears throat> a lot of people look outside and they're like, well, what information am I going to get from the sun? Right. I mean, it's a, uh, excuse me, I can, I can say like, oh yeah, the sun's here. So it must be, you know, mid afternoon ish, or it must, it must be, you know, the evening. Cause I know the sun is setting. That's the only information it's telling me. So can you just go into a little more detail about like what, what information am I getting from the sun besides just me acknowledging its position in the sky? Absolutely. So uh, the, it, it's the various shades of the color. Those have different frequencies. So like uh, you know, we were talking about EMFs at the beginning, beneficial ones and non-beneficial. The red spectrum of that light is very beneficial. And during the first 45 minutes sunrise, last 45 of sunset, we're getting a lot of that red light. And so people know about red light therapy and how beneficial it is. You get that from the sun. That's the best source. I mean, of course, these devices, I mean, I've got one shining right here. They're wonderful and highly encourage the use of them and... Uh, be sure to get outside in the sun and and get that light through your eyes as well. That's the most important thing because that we, we are creating different, uh, you know, biochemical uh, reactions and different sort of nutrients based off of these spectrums of light. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, all of that has different information that's actually affecting us. And what it ultimately does is that information flows through our body Via, via water because water is the best transmitter of information and light and it's able to store the information just like a crystal because water actually is with it's structured and it's you know living it is a living crystal hmm. so that's that's how it all sort of ties in together because that light of that full spectrum can interact with that water and actually then elicit those beneficial effects for us yeah that's awesome on so many levels. That's awesome. And it's this idea that we hear the word EMF, right? We hear the word EMF and there's automatically a negative connotation with it, right? These days. But what we're, what we're, what we don't recognize is there are EMFs that are beautiful. Like you said, the sun contains its own electromagnetic frequencies that it's giving to us that literally power us with both energy and information that we can use to just thrive on all different levels. It's, it's nutrients for our body. So we need that. Um, and then we hear about other versions of, of, of uh, electromagnetic fields, maybe perhaps even the ones that we make something like the ones in my brain, you know, like my brain, I can register, uh, you know, using an in e, EEG, right? I can do brain uh, electromagnetic waves, my heart, I can do an EKG and measure electromagnetic waves that are coming from my heart. So there's EMFs in our environment that we really need to be in tune with because of the energy and the information they provide. But I don't think a lot of people, so I don't think a lot of people kind of recognize that, but what the sun provides us is maybe, I think it's like, it's less than 1% of the electromagnetic fields in our environment. So we're literally surrounded with waves of energy, almost like we're in a, in a tank, right? In an aquarium, just full of these waves of energy. And they're all impactful, but these days it's almost like it's being polluted or maybe diluted. I don't know what your viewpoint is with the non-native ones that we're putting out that involve things like the Wi-Fi radiation, the cell phone radiation, the even radio waves that were, you know, what was that 1920s maybe? And, and so can you talk a little bit about what we have these days versus what might've been, you know, what is an ideal electromagnetic environment for us? And now how is it shifting? Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, these technologies, as everyone, as, as everyone knows, just, you know, I'd, I'd say common sense and intuitively that you know, we, we've heard it enough that, okay, cell phones cause cancer as a statement, okay? And people have debated it, but it is very clear that that can happen. Obviously, that doesn't happen for everyone, but that can create effects. So, like you said, Carrie, like we need 
the the beneficial EMFs. But when we start getting into these EMFs that are much more detrimental, then we need to do things that counteract it. But um, you know, with these EMFs, the the frequency of these things have just become so heightened that our biology and you know our, our quantum biology is not. Uh, it's, it's best if we are not interacting with those sorts of frequencies because they absolutely have very detrimental physiological effects. And this is, you know, very clearly shown uh, through the research. So these are like, these are, these are, these are man-made frequencies, right. That are foreign to us because we, from what you said before, the water in our body, it's literally set up to trap EMFs, right? Like that's how how we've been designed. Like our body wants to interact with EMFs in our environment, but our body was built to interact with the sun. Our body was built to interact with the magnetism of the earth. Our body was built to interact with the EMFs maybe coming off of someone else's body towards us in our biofield. And instead now we, it's like this unfortunate situation where we have the capability of interacting with all EMFs. And that includes the ones that are now ones that we've never had for a very, uh, you know, I guess for millions of years in human history or however long time scale you want to put humans on the planet. It's only been very, very recently that, uh, that we have these other signals. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, so I I, I'm hearing you say that they're, they're potentially destroying that water network in the body and therefore they're impairing the signaling that has to happen through that water network. Would that be a true statement? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what, Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You're good, Carrie. And so, well, so then what I was going to say with that is, so now with EMFs then, Lance, like, I feel like there's two camps, right? There's two camps of people. Well, I mean, well, there's a couple, right? There's the camp that says I'm going to move off grid and just get away from everything, which I don't actually think these days is even possible, right? With satellites coming down and the, the fact that, that uh, people have to recognize that every new EMF that's created, it gets trapped, right? It gets trapped in between the surface of the earth and the ionosphere and it like bounces back and forth. So it's not like, so, so it's not like we can ever really truly escape them. But I know a lot of people who are, they're like, okay, I want to get, I want to get away from them. The other strategy is, well, I'm going to shield, right? I'm going to sleep in a Faraday cage, or I'm going to wear EMF protective clothing and things. And so I'm going to shield myself from it. And then I'm going to do things that I can to mitigate my environment, hardwire stuff, you know, never, ever use it. And then there's the device of this, the concept that, that um, I'm really interested in exploring with you is this idea of harmonizing with harmonizing the EMFs or harmonizing with them. I don't even know the right terminology because this is something that like, I really haven't dove, dove into. So give me some language here. Like what's, what are we doing? What are we trying to do with the non-beneficial EMFs in our environment? And what do you think is the route to the future in terms of how we interact with them? Awesome. So, uh, you know, short-term these, these EMFs, the best way I feel, and as it relates to harmonizing is, you know, it's very hard as you talked about all of that, it's very hard for one to, you know, truly be off the grid. Like, I mean, exactly as you said, I mean, there's uh, satellites everywhere that can see far more than, than we know, you know, and, uh, so like setting up one's life of, you know, Faraday in your bed, Faraday in your whole house, uh, you know, doing all sorts of different things. That's not realistic for most people. And, you know, it's a lot of money. It can be a lot of money. It can be a lot of time. Okay. So that it's good. So then we need to look at what a next step could be, which is actually then, because what are we trying to solve? We're actually trying to solve the effects of what that EMF radiation is doing. If we can counteract the effects of it physiologically, then uh, those EMFs are not going to be harmful to us. So, you know, with with the company that I started, that's what we're doing with this technology. And we're using Nikola Tesla's scalar wave technology, which is, uh, you know, very different from the Hertz based, uh, you know, information that we have. Let's, I need um, to stop you there though, because that's a new word on this podcast, scalar, right? I don't even know, I don't even know if I mentioned Tesla before. Um, so who was Tesla and talk about how scalar waves are different from what you were talking about with the other EMFs. Yeah, for sure. So, um, Nikola Tesla, um, a Austrian, uh, Austrian, 
uh, man who eventually came over here to the U.S. and, and passed in the U.S. in New York City. But he was a uh, hi hyper brilliant genius who was, you know, fluent in I think eight languages. Uh, he he was he had a very very regimented lifestyle. He's um, super brilliant with uh, you know electromagnetism, scalar waves, uh, free energy technology, transmitting information wirelessly. Uh, and without doing harm, and he his work eventually you know was was seized, but uh, you know his information was actually stolen as well, and so he he has not been given credit as as much as he definitely deserved, but that will absolutely be changing in the very very near future because those sort of te technologies are coming back out. And they already are out and, and more is coming as, as we go along. And, you know, Tesla was just like this genius who was so advanced and so far ahead of all the other scientists, namely Edison, who ended up taking some of Tesla's work. Um, you know, this is the sort of person and man this guy was. So talk about the scalar waves. Like I, I and you yeah. mentioned the word hertz, right? That basically just means like if you picture a pendulum swinging back and forth, like you have these true waves that you recognize with a frequency, you know, with an electromagnetic wave. So sunlight, uh, you know, red frequency looks different than ultraviolet frequency. So what makes a scalar wave look different? So the scalar waves are. Uh, are present and always have been. And how it relates to the Hertz is that um, Hertz, it's, it was much easier for scientists to actually measure it with the, the instruments and technology that was widely available at the time. Um, but Tesla with his advanced technology and his advanced understanding of you know, all the sciences, he was actually able to show uh, that scalar waves are right there alongside it. But the the uh, the way it interacts with the the third dimension is that there's an aspect to it that actually goes into the fourth dimension, and they can actually measure that too. And uh, so, um, basically, information can get transferred in different ways as it compares to the hertz frequency. And so, with scalar waves, you can transmit information. Uh, and what we can do with this is actually program in frequencies via scalar waves and transmit uh, different frequencies or information, whatever you want to call it, onto biological life. So let's say as humans or plants or animals, um, it's basically a vehicle through which information can get uh, transmitted. So does that, would that interact with the water in my body as well? Another way, do we know that that could happen with the scalar waves and do all, so do, do scalar waves have a source? Like the sun is a source of electromagnetic waves or my Wi-Fi router is a source of electromagnetic frequencies. Do scalar waves always travel with electromagnetic frequencies or are they sep are they separate from that? No, they're with, they're with. Okay, okay. Yep. so we just don't recognize that as these waves are propagating, there's this other component to it that basically transcends time and space is what you're saying. And, uh, exactly. okay, and yeah. this is, this is so, so wild, but awesome at the same time. And that we can manipulate those scalar waves in a certain way so that we can mitigate a negative impact of what, what's happening with the frequency. Cause it's the frequency, right? That can be, and yeah. the then the pulsed nature of it that can be detrimental to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, to make this even more real, real for people, because, you know, when you, when we make the statement that these scalar waves are operating, operating outside of this 3d world, you know, because there are other uh, dimensions out there, it, it can, can uh, uh, trip up people in a way where like they think, okay, well, this is now just sci-fi, but we can go back to what actually happened with Heinrich Hertz, the scientist who you know made this Hertz uh, based frequency popular and, and accepted. Uh, he had presented this and, and Tesla had actually talked to him and, and said, there's actually something different, these scalar waves. And so he invited Hertz to visit him and, and he showed him and Hertz uh, was um, intending on uh, basically withdrawing his work. He wanted to, but he was not allowed to. And then uh, Tesla's work did not come out. Heinrich Hertz's work stayed published. And 
um, you know, that's, that's been how it's been since that time. So, you know, th that's just a question to ask, well, why would they do that? Why would they not want that information to come out? That goes down a lot of different roads, but the point is if they actively uh, did not want this information out there, do you think they were just trying to, let's say, cover up a lie or cover up the truth? I mean, what, what makes most sense? You know, if they don't want information out there, there's probably something about it that's true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I heard that uh, I believe our government is in ownership of a couple of Tesla trunks uh, that might contain some really key information. So that's it's fascinating, right? It's fascinating. But that's but I wish we had more time. I know we are, we're on a bit of a time crunch, so we don't necessarily we can't dive down that rabbit hole. But um, but what you're basically saying is we've been sold a half truth in this idea that we've got EMFs everywhere. And that's that's recognized, right? You there's charts of the electromagnetic spectrum that talk about x-rays and radio waves and visible light and ultraviolet light. Like we recognize that all of those waves are present in our environment. But what you're saying is that along with all of those, all that all along has been these scalar waves. And essentially any research that's been done just simply looking at the electromagnetic frequency without the scalar wave that's associated with it, that's not really telling us the complete picture. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it, it, is, it, is, it is a half truth, yeah. Definitely. And I mean, some people had called it, these are not my words, but some people have called it the, the, the scalar waves, the, the greatest scientific discovery ever, or at least up to that point. Um, and, you know, a person could argue that whatever, which way they wanted, that's not really the point. It's that, you know, this is a, uh, a phenomenon in a, in a information, in an informational technology uh, that, really has profound implications. So that's why, you know, okay. So, so this idea that we have these electromagnetic fields around us and you have a company then that uses scalar wave technology to harmonize those. So, so we make those less uh, negatively impactful than the, the non-native ones. We make, we make them less negatively impactful. What does that look like? Because, you know, so many people are skeptical. We, I, I hear a lot of companies using or trying to use scalar wave technology as, as a source of um, mitigation, you know, or, or, or to support the body even in spite of Wi-Fi or whatever it might be. Um, and there's anecdotal evidence, right? There's people who say, yeah, you know, I got this scalar wave technology and now I feel great. I sleep better. My stress is less. I have, I have less anxiety. Um, which is beautiful. I, I And I love to hear that. And I don't think that the world always needs a randomized placebo controlled trial for everything, right? I think that's, that, that humanity's own stories speaks volumes. But to the true skeptic, Lance, you know, what, what do you tell them when they say, you want me to wear this or put this sticker where and somehow it's going to do what? Like, what, what would that conversation look like? Yeah, definitely. So I'll, I'll give a really good background on this so it can be, you know, thoroughly understood. So the, the way that I started this company is that I was, I was able to, to connect to this uh, scientist and mechanical engineer who actually worked uh, for Nokia and Texas Instruments. And he led a team of over 150 scientists uh, back around 2005, uh, where they were able to make generate some patents for 2G and 3G technology. And he was basically very instrumental in helping to get uh, cell phones to a point to where we could make calls across the world. So like he has a story of he was in China and he, he was able to then speak to his son uh, in bed back here in the US. And so that's who, who like his story is his background. And so I was able to connect with him and talk with him and he is uh, uh, definitely an expert in scalar wave technology and understanding it and how to apply it. That's the most important thing is we can understand it, but how do we actually apply it and make it useful? And he has done that. And so what we do is we use this uh, um, substance called Mylar. Actually, international space programs will use it. It's, it's commonly used in like industrial purposes. And what it can do is it can store uh, it stores things, so frequencies or information. And what we then do is with the scalar wave, uh, th there's certain um, machines that we use. I can't really give uh, ex exact details, um, but you know, it's, uh, 
uh, pretty amazing stuff. And what we'll do is we will actually, uh, we go to nature and we find, okay, what compounds are doing what physiologically for us? Okay, so we'll just use something basic like curcumin from turmeric. You know, it has anti-inflammatory properties and a, a range of other things. Um, and that molecular structure, you know, if you just think of like chemistry class and you have these different structures, those structures based on that geometry literally is creating frequencies. They have their own little, what we call little EMFs, frequencies that come off of that. And we can actually measure those. And then we can measure those and we, uh, we program them, program them in to this mylar technology and it goes into this disc. And so it's a hologram. It's a hologram that can then store information, you know, and, and trust me, I, I am here with everyone on, okay, how does a sticker do that? You know, um, and, and I'll get into that here in a moment, but I, I, you know, thoroughly investigated this and asked so many questions to the scientists over a period of months before I was even comfortable starting this, you know, because I really wanted to make sure it was real. And, uh, you know, shortly after that, I was able to see that the studies that, that they and we have done on this is that we have uh, red blood cell microscopy videos and studies showing how the red blood cells will interact uh, while exposed to EMFs, not exposed to EMFs. So like we had a cell phone there uh, and then with the technology on the cell phone. And the short of it is that when we are exposed to EMFs, harmful EMFs, our red blood cells start roping. This is like the term where they start roping or the clumping together. And so they lose their ability to do a lot of things and namely, uh, you know, get oxygen where it needs to go. And so if there's less oxygen, less life and every physiological, uh, you know, sort of process in our body starts slowing down or, or becomes uh, less optimized. And so what's happening then is we, with this technology, we're actually allowing cells to regain their negative electrical charge on their cell membrane, which then you can see in the video that we have on our website. So they go from healthy and fine with no cell phone exposure cell phone exposure, they start roping and grouping together. And then when we put the technology on the cell phone right there, they, they start declumping again and they start becoming normal, happy, healthy cells who, who have boundaries. And that's what they want. They want to have that negative charge so they can bounce and be free and independent. Yeah, no, that, that's perfect. That's a great example because that's, I think people can see that's, that has happened with grounding too, right? It's like these, the red blood cells need that negative charge. It's their zeta potential because for people who don't recognize, they stack together because they, they're lacking electrons basically on their outer shell, just like Lance is saying. And they, they, when, when, when they each, when two red blood cells each contain enough electrons, the like forces repel each other. So that's how these red blood cells can move independently without stacking up like pancakes. They can move independently through the bloodstream and ferry everything that this red blood cell holds, which is oxygen, it's light, it's uh, nutrients, right? That have to get, then get delivered to every single cell. So that's really cool to, to, to see that that can, that, that just literally by putting a holographic sticker, right? Like, you know, that, that has a certain frequency in it on a cell phone can make that shift and that change. Um, it, now, how Lance, how can you make it work for all the different types of EMFs or do you have to, is it not about counteracting or is it more about imprinting or o over, I don't want to say dominating, right? But like what I do know is that uh, I, there is there is a research that shows like a really strong magnetic field, like Earth's magnetic field or even a magnetic sleep pad. When I'm on a stronger magnetic field, I am more protected from magnetic fields from like my appliance or something because my water molecules will align and spin and wiggle in a certain way that's beneficial in alignment with that stronger magnetic field. So am I doing something like that? Am I overriding the fact that there's these other harmful EMFs because there has been, there's a certain frequency imprinted in the sticker? So we aren't going to be overriding the actual harmful EMFs, but what we can do is uh, in a significant way, uh, mitigate the effects of what those negative EMFs are doing. And so you know, going, going to this, like what we then do is we're not changing the EMFs itself, but just what's happening in the body. And so what we did is we, we 
looked at the science of, okay, what are all of the major physiological effects that happen from the different uh, spectrum of the harmful EMFs, okay? And there's so much published science out there. Uh, that's like a whole nother episode. I could go so deep on that and on how many experts have actually published on this. The media is not telling us the truth on this, nor is the FCC, but um, it's, it's something that we find what these effects are in our body. And then we go to nature and we'll say, okay, what compounds or what sort of uh, minerals or what structures do we know uh, actually have a, a basically a counter effect to that. And then we program those in and then we do it that way. Gotcha. So it's just, a, oh, you're just giving a really beneficial resonance frequency from a natural compound. Like, we, like if we would have ingested it in a very Absolutely. similar way. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. So is, is, is harmonizing EMFs, is it like, can someone say, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm fine now to talk with the cell phone up against my head because I've got this, this sticker on it. That's resonating something beneficial for, for my brain. Or is it like, that's, it's, it's another layer of like what we can do to help our bodies be supported in this soup of potentially toxic EMFs that we're all going to be swimming in if we're not already. <laughs> Absolutely. Another layer, another layer for sure. And, you know, I would, I would still, even if, you know, your phone, like, even if you have a Faraday cage, I mean, you wouldn't be able to use it, but the point is I would never suggest to someone to actually hold up their phone to their ear, regardless of what sort of technology they had on their device. You know, that's just, it's not a smart idea. Um, so definitely another layer of protection. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, it makes sense. I just really want people to, I just really want people to recognize this idea. Like what, what you're not saying, what you're saying isn't woo, right? Um, what we now recognize is like, actually this has been around for forever. It's like every molecule has something called a resonant energy frequency. Right. And, and that's how, that's, that's how the body can recognize what molecules are, what it, they're not looking at the chemistry, right? They're not looking at it and be like, Oh, there's a benzene ring and a hydrogen and a carbon. Like that's how it's happening. This molecule is vibrating in a certain way. And that that's a frequency, right? And that vibration then is, is, is felt by these chemical species in the body that are impacted by it. And so that happens all over. It's like, I call it, it's like this idea. I tell, I tell people it's like the, the, every cell is like a really super crowded frat house, you know, and it's like someone, and in order for a molecule to hear someone, it's like one, one has to be ringing the cowbell. It's not searching out and finding the exact other molecule it needs. It's, it's raising its own frequency so that the other person with the cowbell can also shake it and eventually got enough cowbells going that it, it, it creates some sort of a downstream effect. So this idea is that molecules are always resonating this is super, this intrigues me a ton, right? Because there's a big connection between a lot of the, I mean, you particularly, you, you chose um, curcumin, right? And we now, we know that that's a particular substance that also supports easy water production in the body. And I'm, I'm a, a believer that frequency will grow easy water um, or, or it can shrink it, right? We know that, that being next to a Wi-Fi router will diminish someone's exclusion zone water. And we know then that there's certain things that have been around for forever, like, holy basil tea, uh, turmeric, uh, the, the things that have been used for forever that are, are considered ancient healing herbs, uh, adaptogens, right? That actually then support the water structure. So I have this crazy feeling that what you're doing is you're, you're giving the body a frequency that increases the easy water. Is that what, is that what, is that what it seems like you're doing? hundred percent. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. So like, yeah. okay, that, that, that's just really, really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, Go, go ahead, go, what were you gonna say? Yeah, and, and so, you know, another thing that we have is we've applied this not just for, you know, mitigating EMFs, but we actually uh, are, are doing this for, also for pain relief. Uh, and we can actually program these frequencies, different frequencies, you know, to have different effects, program it in, and we have these uh, patches that you literally will apply to place where you have, you know, occasional aches and pains, whatever's going on. and uh, they actually work. And we, we uh, have shown this with another thermography test that we've done or study. And you can see in real time, I mean, it's a time lapse video over about 20 minutes, 20 minutes, but we had, you know, different uh, people that we did this on. And you could see the red, which, you know, uh, associates with inflammation, changing to green, uh, uh, having a cooling effect in the body and uh, helping to soothe that, that inflammatory process. And so, um, 
you know, it's again, like we, we are just at the end of the day, energy and frequencies that is just act, interacting with other energies and frequencies. And um, if we can program in beneficial things and they can have an effect on us, then that's wonderful. And I mean, you know, I, I don't, uh, I, I'm, I'm often humbled by some of the um, stories I've heard from some people, some of their effects from it. Uh, and like, it's, it's really uh, amazing hearing how this stuff can actually help people in a way that they, there is no mistake that this actually helped them. And yes, there is absolutely, you know, the power of the mind. And that is first and foremost, in my belief, that, you know, we, we can override and overcome everything with our own willpower and mind. Um, and at the same time, we all can benefit from, you know, things that can be helpful. Oh yeah, a absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it, I think also in a way it's, it's why, it's why prayer works, right? It's why, it's why, uh, positive visualization works. It's why all those things, all thoughts are frequencies and all those frequencies that are impacting the water network. And that really people who, who follow me, they know that I'm all about like, keeping that water, that, that liquid crystalline water, we need enough of it and we need it organized and it organizes itself and, and, and it increases itself based on the stimuli it gets both inside of our bodies and outside. So it really does sound to me like what you're doing is you're just giving, you're bringing closer to the body frequencies that we know just are beneficial would be beneficial without ingesting them. I did look at that. Your, one of those videos or maybe a couple actually with, the, with, it looked like, like patches almost like, 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 like a sticker yeah. on someone's body. Right. And, yep. it, and, uh, and the, the time-lapse of the thermography was really cool because that those, uh, are often used to show before and afters for things like grounding too, because it will show a reduction in inflammation. Yours showed that exact thing. These people with these massive amounts of inflammation on their back or in their lower legs, all of a sudden, I didn't even realize it was only 20 minutes, but clearing up extremely quickly. So how, how lasting is that? How, how long does someone have to use that? What, what, what are stories or what's the data on that? Yeah. So, okay. We suggest uh, two to three days for one patch, but it is highly variable for the individual. Some people um, will feel them, they'll, they'll want to just, they'll feel the effects for let's say a day and they'll want to just, you know, switch out a new one. Some people we've, we've had people literally still feeling the effects a week later, wearing the same one. Okay. So, but the oils and the salts in the skin dissolve and, you know, basically disorganize the structure of these frequencies. And so that's why, you know, there is a shelf life on it. Whereas the ones on the cell phones, like it's, we've tested at six years. Uh, I, I would have all faith that it would actually last longer, just as long as it's not scratched or dented. But that goes back to the skin with the patches is, the salts and the oils kind of disrupt the frequencies. So every couple of days and, you know, some of the testimonials have just been amazing. Like a person who had done something with their Achilles, like had torn it and they were not supposed to be walking for something like, I don't know if it was like eight or 10 weeks, something like that, pretty significant. And the person wrote me back in our company and said, uh, he was literally exercising at the gym four weeks later when he shouldn't have been walking eight to 10 weeks later. And like, I, I believe it. Cause I mean, I had interacted with the guy and, you know, he had no reason to, you know, make up the story. So it was really quite mind blowing. And that we, we have uh, many of those and it's, you know, really, really heartwarming to hear it and encouraging, you know, to keep helping people with this. Uh, it's yeah, that's, I mean, it's powerful to, it's just, I think this is, it's, it's just mind blowing for some people, the power of something like that, but also the, and the power of the mind. I mean, all, all that stuff is connected when it comes to the fact that the body can heal on a level that doesn't require something like a pharmaceutical or a surgery, or, a, I mean, that's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Now, do you ever have any issues? Like what, I mean, let's say, uh, let's say someone's got a curcumin allergy, right? You know, or they have an allergic reaction to an imprinted frequency. Does that ever happen? Good question. Uh, not that I know of, nor that um, I've, you know, ever even heard of, but I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, but it would be very hard to obviously pinpoint and, and, it would just be so individualistic that how, how is that frequency going to impact them? You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
It's a great question, uh, but we haven't had any like feedback on that. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. So then yeah. this this is different than two because a lot of people use crystals or shungite or like a stone, right? Because it can, because crystals, just like our liquid crystal can also trap EMFs, right? And so the thought is if I wear this necklace, uh, you know, full of these crystals or this bracelet that I am taking the EMFs that would be harming me and I'm somehow trapping them in this, this crystal. Now, I mean, I, again, I haven't looked into it, right? So I can't poo poo it one way or the other, but my brain goes to, well, that would, that actually seems like I would be drawing EMFs closer to my body that I wouldn't necessarily want. And so yours, it, because it uses the scalar waves, isn't, isn't actually attracting EMFs like those theoretically would. Yours is just imprinting a frequency, correct? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, wow. So what, what types yeah. of things, like what, to, I mean, we only have about 10 minutes left. So what types of things do you have? You have patches, you have stickers, you have bracelets. Like what, what are your technologies and what should people use them for? Yeah, definitely. So we have a bracelet, which I'm wearing right here. Um, and this, this I will show actually has this hologram uh on the inside here um you can see it and because it's up against it, it's protected so it's not going to be rubbed off by this by the salt and oil this one we've actually programmed in just for like overall like basic optimized physiological wellness so again we go and we look at what's the optimal physiological conditions in the body uh and how like what are what are compounds that really just help bring us back to homeostasis and just like some big overarching ways okay that's one uh the cell phone disc we have scripts for computers as well and then um the patches for you know occasional aches and pains things like that we actually just release sleep patches which is uh amazing because what we're doing is we're actually taking again certain frequencies that are going to help induce sleep and you put them right here on a certain spot on your neck and this actually relates to a chinese acupressure point that that eventually ties down to the gallbladder and has been commonly used for thousands of years in ancient chinese medicine or traditional chinese medicine that uh you know this is associated with uh, helping to induce sleep. Okay. And so before we even launched this, you know, like all of this stuff is tested with not just the tests that we do, you know, like the thermography and the microscopy, but also on many, many people to get feedback and to actually, you know, do, uh, you know, that sort of anecdotal testing as well. So we sent it out to, uh, these patches 60 days worth to 280 people, you know, a lot of them that we knew. And uh, we had 230 people respond to a pretty extensive questionnaire that we asked. And the overall, uh, you know, sort of data on it was that 87% uh, felt that they had slept better or, or woke up more refreshed uh, on, you know, many of those nights or after the two months that they felt like overall they're sleeping better. Wow. Interesting. I mean... Yeah. It, it, it makes sense because if you're, if you're in, I mean, the, the meridian points, I, I think it's hard to argue that those have been mapped out with the most amazing amount of not only energy medicine, but also observation, um, so many ways, right. That the, the meridian points I think are, uh, have been validated. Like I, I have, I have a hard time when people are like, oh, that's woo. Right. I, so I, I a hundred percent believe that there's the possibility to, to stimulate one of those points with frequency for of, of substances that help us fall asleep. I mean, it, it really, it's mind blowing, but what, what I know about sticking a needle into that, um, meridian point, you know, for acupuncture would be it, it does, it impacts an electrical signaling and it impacts the water, the fascia and the water there. So why wouldn't that same thing happen with simply a frequency applied from a sticker? I mean, you'd also with a sticker, you'd get a little bit of a piezoelectric effect. So a very, very similar very, very similar way. You'd have that stimulation at that point. I, my, my brain's just, man, like we need to talk for another three hours here, Lance. Like, <laughs> I'm just starting to really wrap my brain around the, the, the potential for a technology like this. Absolutely. I agree, Carrie. And, and, you know, going to the point of the water and the meridians, I mean, as you know, the water clusters are at the ends of, of those or at certain points along those meridians. And when we're you know, doing the acupressure or acupuncture 
those needles, it's, you know, just like you said, striking those water clusters and, the, and like all that organized structured water right there. And then it's like, boom, it's like a cascade of light, literally. And then that is transferred amongst the water as you've written about through the collagen in the body. And, you know, it's just uh, quite amazing. It's, it's brilliant. And I mean, I, I feel like we have to end it here because otherwise I think we're going to get into another whole host of topics that we can talk about. I mean, at some point I want to chat with you about pine pollen because you opened my yeah. eyes to this idea like that this thing, this even exists. I mean, I know that pine, there's pine pollen, but who knew how therapeutic it could be? Uh, so, so yeah, Lance, anything else you want to share with us as we kind of wrap up this conversation? It's, it's really opening my eyes from being the type of person who says, only mitigate, mitigate, mitigate with EMFs, right? To this idea that we have other options that might be super supportive for your particular physiology. Yeah, absolutely. I know this was wonderful, Carrie. This was a great, great conversation. We've got many more to come for sure. I would absolutely love that, Lance. I'm looking forward to it. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, yeah, we'll chat soon. Thank you.